Welcome to our video, which will show how balsamic mockups can make life better for you, your colleagues, and your PeopleSoft users. A balsamic mockup is a fantastic tool for quickly drafting user interface mockups, so it's great to have in workshops when you're debating how some functionality should be represented on screen. It's faster than PowerPoint or MS Paint, as many of the controls you'll need are already pre built, and it's better than pen and paper or a whiteboard, as you can easily shuffle the controls around and you've got an electronic copy to email around at the end. My favourite plus point though is that the look of the mock-up lets everyone know that it's a work in progress. No one will believe that the functionality is already half built. So let's get started. First we're going to add a tabs box to our screen. This is when we start our page. This grey box here is the properties dialog. So first of all we're going to take the border off and then we're going to double click here to change the text of the tabs. Now we're going to choose which tab we want to make the selected tab. I'm going to choose the first one and I'm going to make the font size a little bigger. I'm going to start off by adding a field label here. This will be the label to the, uh, the first text field on the page. Just drag it into place, double click it and I can enter the name. I copy and paste, I get these nice uh, lines to help me line everything up. And then I can change the properties to this one I don't want to be in bold. Now I'm going to add a horizontal rule which will allow me to divide the fields at the top from those down below which are text editable. So I copy and paste the label and again I get the, the, the helper so I know that everything's lined up. Double click and type in the text. Now I'm going to put a text input field onto the page. This one appears in a box so the users will know that this one is editable. Again I get the, the lines to show me that everything's lined up. Type in the text and I can drag the limits of the field to the size that I require. Now I'm going to copy and paste these fields because I want two more fields that are, that are kind of similar. Use the arrow keys to shuffle them around just so I can get them accurately lined up and type in the titles and this one I want to resize this is a shorter description field so I can drag this one right down copy and paste the title again for the next field line them up but this one isn't going to be a text input field this one is going to be a date field so I choose a date picker from the uh, from the field chooser type in the date and that's done on to the next field you can group fields and shuffle them around to make sure they're all lined up nicely. This next field is going to be a drop down box or a combo box. So I choose this from the field, cho field chooser. And uh, line them up nicely. Now I'm going to have a few fields here that are the same so I'm just going to select those two and copy and paste and then line them up nicely. And then I can quickly double double click to change the field descriptions and the values in the drop downs. I'm just going to line these up because these are all irregular sizes, and you'll notice that when I drag and drop them, they uh, they snap to the width of the fields nearby. Copy and paste the title for the next one, and these are just straight text boxes. So I'm just going to copy these down from above. The difference with these is that these are going to be holding numerical values. And as you can see, once you've got one of each type of field on the page, it's really quite quick just to copy and paste the ones that you uh, that you want. With these are uh, these numeric fields. What I'm going to do, I'm going to highlight all of them at one at once and uh, write a line. And then finally on this side of the page, I'm going to copy these uh, these fields down here, make these the desired size, and then I'm going to make these uh, disabled because these aren't editable at the moment. Now starting on the other side, I'm going to select the course status field and bring across one of these date choosers. You can see reusing components makes this uh, design process a lot quicker. Now I'm going to add some check boxes and I'm going to choose selected as the state for these so they have the uh, the check in the box 
and then there's these final two uh, drop down fields at the bottom of the screen. Now those fields are done, it's time to create a button bar across the bottom. I choose button from the field chooser, change the text, and on this properties dialog you can see I can search for an icon and then size it appropriately. I'm going to clone this button to create the return, for, return to search, choose the, uh, the spyglass, and then the notify one also, which I need a mail icon of some kind. I'm going to choose two more buttons over this side, first of all add, and then the update display icon, uh, button. Next we're going to create the top of the portal. So I need a rectangle first of all which I'm going to stretch to size and then I'm going to remove the border and colour it blue. Perfect. OK I need some text on there so I'm going to copy this label, colour it white and give it an appropriate size, maybe a bit bigger. OK, copy this and this will go over the other side, so a little bit smaller text now. And this will be the, uh, the URL bar. Let's uh, put this in the right place. OK, that looks about right. Uh, next, for those of you familiar with Tools 850, there's a, a grey bar below. It's a bit dark, that's a bit better. And uh, we want to put the uh, the text in there for the menus and the breadcrumbs. Stretch this out and position it. OK. And just move those tabs down a bit. Next we need the icon bar. So insert an icon and label. Put the text in first and then move the icon to the side of the text. Add a picture and then size it appropriately. Move it into place. And uh, we want some slightly smaller blue text. Perfect. We want to repeat the process now for the help link, for customize page, and the HTTP link. And this is the finished product. Not too dissimilar from an actual PeopleSoft page. It gives your developers a really clear requirement to build against, and it shows your business users exactly what they're going to get. Thank you for your time.